So another supplement claims to be the magic bullet for osteoporosis. In our weekly free masterclass, I had at least 10 people ask me about this supplement, Coact. They must be doing a good job advertising. It's advertised as a calcium chelate with hydrolyzed collagen peptide. And this is their claim. And this is directly from uh, a supplement uh, dispensary website. It says that Coact was designed to encourage collagen support and turnover while supporting optimal bone mineral density and strength. A clinical study showed that Coact improved bone health in postmenopausal women by increasing bone synthesis and decreasing bone resorption. Sounds pretty good. But you probably know me by now, and you know that I don't like to believe headlines, abstracts, or even supplement advocates without actually personally seeing the data. So what I'd like to do is dig into this product and see if it really is a magic bullet that we should consider, and will this product actually change the way that I recommend supplementation, specifically around calcium and around micronutrients. So I'm curious what calcium supplement you guys are taking. And if you are taking a calcium or a mineral supplement, leave me a comment on YouTube, because I'd love to get a sense of what this group is taking, because you guys do really, really good research, and I wanna see what it is. So people ask me all the time to review products, so often that I've had to create a system to keep my integrity in check. It's really easy to be persuaded by affiliate deals and the finances of the whole supplement industry world, believe me. But let me walk you through the process that I've created. So the first thing I do is I check out the website. I look at their claims. And then if they have research, which they better, then I wanna look at their research. I wanna find it, I wanna dig into it. And then I'll look at the actual products. What is actually available? Um, is this something that I could even recommend? Is it actually available in the United States or depending on the market that we're talking about? So when it comes to Coact, they have a great site. Um, it is directed both at consumers and manufacturers, and they talk about the product and they make some general claims about the product that all check out. It's all legitimate. They have age appropriate images and fun graphics about bone becoming more dense and um, kind of all the usual marketing stuff. And that's all fine. A few things that raise red flags for me are some of the subtle attention to detail things. So, you know, the little logo in the browser tab up at the top, it hasn't been updated from the WordPress generic logo. So that's just a pet peeve of mine. Also, I noticed that the coact.net is the address that they use for their URL. Um, and I feel like most legitimate companies are going to have a .com, big companies. I'm not banging on any small businesses out there, but, um, but big companies should have a .com address. And again, this is just a personal like entrepreneurial preference. Uh, but again, kind of a little red flag for me. Um, you'll also notice that the company has recruited two YouTube influencers. So you scroll down on their website, you see the two YouTube influencers, um, and they have made some videos and they talk about the products and they likely have an affiliate relationship. I didn't listen long enough to see if they disclose that. Um, and I'm totally open to affiliate relationships. I have some myself, you probably know that. Um, so I'm happy to participate in those if it's a product that I can stand behind. So when I did look at the material that they have available, one of the things that really stood out to me is that in these particular affiliate relationships, they have a podiatrist and a chiropractor and nothing against those two uh, subspecialties of care. I know fantastic podiatrists and fantastic chiropractors. But what I'd love to see is I'd love to see either a researcher or an MD or a DO, somebody with a medical degree who's using this in clinical practice, somebody who is actually taking care of patients, recommending this and prescribing it um, with these two influencers, even though their YouTube channel far outpaces mine with subscribers, I don't quite get the sense of credibility that I would get if this were somebody who's actually using it in practice. So the next thing on the website that's relevant here is that your viewers now have an option of either buying Coact or going to the manufacturer site. And that manufacturer is named AIDP. Now, if you click on the link to purchase it, it'll take you to Amazon and you can see the Life Extension product that has Coact in it. Now, Life Extension is a fine company. They make good products, but I do discourage purchasing supplements on Amazon because it's hard to know where they're coming from. It's hard to know where they've been stored. Are they still viable? Are they still good? Did somebody repackage a bottle? It's impossible to know. So I would encourage getting supplements from um, stores, uh, online uh, dispensers like Fullscript or using somebody's dispensary. And this is what our, our health span nation individuals do. They're using our dispensary and they're getting it from Fullscript where Fullscript will store things in a temperature controlled uh, warehouse. And they're very good about checking to make sure that things are not going to be expired uh, and that you're actually getting what you think you're getting because they're getting it from the actual 
manufacturer. So then we move on to the research. Now, they say that there is a clinical study, but they don't actually link to it on their website. So I actually had to do a little research, uh, found it on my own, and there is a clinical study that shows that COACT may have some benefit for bone. So once I found it, I went through it, and let's talk about what we've done with this information when I chatted with my uh, providers about this. Before we get to that, though, if you're having a hard time putting together all of the information that we are putting out there for bone health, I totally get it. If you haven't already, consider joining me in my free masterclass. This is something we do every one to two weeks. I generally run it personally, and we go through how we are putting together a bone health program and then leave about 15 minutes for questions at the end. So if you haven't done that, I would encourage you to do that. Look for the description in, um, or the link rather, in the description on YouTube. All right, so let's talk about this study. So this is a reasonable clinical study. It was published in 2015, and it's a randomized control trial comparing placebo to this COACT product. Now, they did this study for 12 months, and they actually looked at uh, both BMD at six-month and at the 12-month mark. So that's pretty cool. They had 112 postmenopausal women that were screened, and only 39 met their inclusion criteria, which is kind of a good thing. It means that they were cutting out a lot of potential variables that may have made things more confusing. They only included women that had osteopenia, though. So these are postmenopausal women with osteopenia, so not exactly our target population, uh, but still good to see. And these are also women that had not been exposed to hormone replacement therapy or any kind of bone metabolism drug over the last three months. So that's kind of cool. Now, the intervention was to receive a five gram dose of this calcium chelate, which is the COAC product. And they also had within there a 500 milligram calcium, a 200 IU of D3 in this same product. So it's all part of the COAC product. They were then taking four capsules twice daily. So that's eight capsules total during the day. The control group received the 500 milligrams of elemental calcium and 200 IU of D3 in the same number of capsules. So we always want to look at dropout because uh, the statistics will vary based off of how many people actually finish the study or not. And so in this study, there was only one that dropped out in the calcium chelate group and none in the control group at six months. So that's really good. So they had 100% almost of the participants that made it to the six month mark. But between six and 12 months, they lost nine in the control group and seven in the calcium chelate group. Um, and so that's actually a pretty big chunk. So that's between 30 and 40%, depending on the group. Um, they cited pill fatigue, GI distress, uh, or they just lost follow-up, meaning that they couldn't get in contact with them anymore. Um, so that's a little concerning, but we can spin that data either way, and they do. So they did a good job with the data to some extent to show, you know, what happens if we look at all of the participants or what happens if we just look at the remaining 10 to 12 individuals, depending on the group that you're talking about. So what they go on to show with a very nice figure is that the bone mineral density did improve in the calcium chelate group compared to the placebo group. So that's cool, right? And then we can just close the book on this and we can walk away. Not exactly. So we always have to look at the details on this thing. So when we look at the data, what we see is that the calcium chelate group actually still lost bone. In fact, if you look at the numbers, the numbers are really similar. In fact, in one of the statistical analyses, the spine actually got worse than the control. And so in the paper, again, they show this nice figure, and you can see it right here. They show this nice figure that shows that, oh, yeah, there's a statistically significant difference. But if you look at this, you can see that it's whole body bone mineral density. Not that we shouldn't look at whole body BMD, but I'm really more interested in what's happening in your spine and in your hip. So if you look at table three, you can actually see that this, this is really where everything comes into play. And so what you see is that the bone mineral density is listed as L1 through 4, total body and total hip. So they did a good job of actually uh, calculating some of these things. And I'm going to bore you with some of the details here for a second, because I think it really is helpful to understand how to look at this. So when you look at this table, you can see that in the L1 to 4 bone mineral density that they put the numbers in there. But the, when you compare that in the placebo group to the control group, you can see that the loss of bone was exactly the same, exactly the same, like to the thousandth of a point. So there was no difference there. So in the total hip, there was a, a subtle difference between the two. So the, the control did lose a little bit more bone than did the um, intervention group, but they both lost bone. So studies report bone mineral density like this are using the actual bone mineral density number and they're not reporting T-score. And one of the reasons why they shouldn't report T-score in a study like this is that the T-score is likely not to be any different. So you can see better changes when you look at the, the actual bone mineral density, but it can be 
confusing when you say something is statistically significant with a change in bone mineral density, but the T-score would have actually probably not changed. And it's impossible to measure that when you only report the bone mineral density because all the machines require additional information to actually create a T-score. So they go on to do a subgroup analysis, again, of those people that actually made it to the end of the study, which is now a very small group of 10 and 12 individuals, respectively. And when you look at the differences in bone mineral density, neither of them were statistically significant. There was a subtle difference between the two. So at the end of the study, they also then disclosed that this study was funded by AIDP, the manufacturer, and that the product was provided to the participants, again, by the manufacturer, which is not wrong. This is very common in the supplement industry, but it, it exposes us to potential for bias. So I'd love to see more than one study. Also, one of the authors is an employee of AIDP, and they disclosed that as well. So again, it's not wrong. It is just a potential for bias. So what's the takeaway for me? Well, I think this was a reasonably well-designed study. But for me, it doesn't really meet the clinical significance that I need in order for me to make a change in my clinical practice. The intervention was okay. It slowed down bone loss, but it did not build bone. And I think we've seen other uh, supplements that can do better uh, compared to placebo than, uh, either, than just slowing down bone loss. If you compare this then to a company that I do have an affiliate relationship with, AlgaeCal, when you look at their studies, there's still room for improvement there, but they clearly show not a maintenance of bone or a slowing of bone loss, but actually building bone over the course of one, two, and three years. And they have multiple studies, again, that are showing this. So if you want to review that video, you can look at that video over here. I also have a supplement video here, my, my favorite supplement for 2024 uh, that I updated recently over the last couple of months. So I hope that makes sense and why when you look at studies and in uh, advertisements for supplements that claim that they have the magic bullet, you really need to look deep into the details, look at the study to be able to understand why this thing may or may not uh, replace something that's currently in your stack. And remember to just pick the lowest hanging fruit, the most powerful tools that you can, because again, we're only able to check our bone mineral density every one to two years. So we wanna make sure we're making good choices around the products that we're using to improve our bone density and hopefully reversing osteoporosis naturally. So that's it. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is the beginning. I'll see you in the next video.